Hello, but you probably have heard already that Britney Spears will not um, be allowed to leave the conservatorship of her father. Uh, one of the uh, co-participants, uh, the uh, Bessemer Trust, have uh, withdrawn their engagement, but uh, the family will still control all of her uh, estates as well as her personal decisions to the minutia, um, including her decisions uh, what she may buy on a day-to-day -day basis, her food for example. And this comes as a shock to most of us, I think, because uh, we thought that uh, she lives a, a very rich, wealthy life and um, may take some of these uh, horrific troubles like uh, the, the constant papar paparazzi, for example, um, or uh, her, the, the public scrutiny in, in her everyday affairs um, as a, a compensation for the, the upsides of her lifestyle. In reality, it seems that uh, her decisions are barely her own and uh, that she may uh, have a pool for herself, but she cannot just go to a public bath. Um, she cannot um, mingle with ordinary people. She cannot uh, do anything on her own. She is completely lonely most of the time. And we are sitting here wondering why her mental health is in bad shape when I think most of us would be in shambles uh, in such a situation. So I want to use this opportunity to talk about the autonomy of the person, our own decision making, uh, uh, individual uh, health and how people can be uh, called crazy uh, just to exploit them or for maybe political purposes. What reignited the interest in, in Britney Spears' private affairs um, was her testimony to the to the court past week as you know and um, it was a, a very composed woman uh, speaking and giving her her view of the situation and it stands to ask whether we are talking about somebody who is mentally fragile or if we are talking about somebody maybe some of the most um, most stable most mentally healthy people driven into a state of insanity and I would like to make the case that uh, we are probably seeing the latter, that we are seeing a person who had been in control of her mind for, uh, for most of her life um, until there was this ultimate collapse um, when uh, she was uh, uh, taken from her home in a, on a stretcher uh, and apparently had tried to commit suicide. Up until then, um, there was this uh, this hardworking girl who was very conscientious, uh, very uh, focused on her career, uh, the dream girl, so to say, the American um, ideal woman uh, who did everything she was asked to do uh, and uh, doing it uh, with the most effort she could master. So what happened was that this driven, um, hardworking, very focused young lady was um, uh, controlled by freaks um, every minute of her life, literally every minute of her life, um, until she could no longer cope. And then uh, she sought help, so to say. And unfortunately, women more often than men uh, seek the attention or seek help by either substance abuse that usually takes the form of medication or uh, in, in the form of um, um, suicide um, attempts usually unsuccessful suicide attempts. Um, this is something that is not that rare uh, in women actually. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, women trying to, to cut their wrists when they are teenagers, etc, etc. Um, this is something I think a lot of women can identify with and uh, instead of getting the attention and instead of getting hurt, the people who controlled her did actually the opposite. They uh, took away all autonomy, uh, the rest of the autonomy she had over her life from her. Of course, one can argue that she had these short-lived marriages and the way she broke uh, down in that uh, final moment um, may have put a risk to her own children. And yet, um, this is a special situation and the entire run up to it um, suggests that she is a person who had uh, a very strong, um, a very strong um, edifice, mental edifice, on which a pressure could be rested uh, for a substantial time, um, and most of us 
um, when we are young um, and she she had a breakdown in her, in her mid 20s right so most of us when we are young we are very impressionable we are actually far more fragile most of us have said and done things that are not very smart and there was this ultimate moment when she locked herself up in the bathroom with her children and did not want anybody to come in uh, etc etc but this has been a one-off situation as far as i know um, there are no complaints that have met my ears so far that she had been abusive towards her children or that uh, there was any risk coming uh, from her actually towards her children even though that uh, one particular situation may have been scary to these two um, and yet uh, she was forced to uh, to uh, get an uh, IUD device that is uh, sterilization um, and against her will she uh, said in her testimony that she wishes to have children and be married with her boyfriend and I would like to progressively move forward and I want to have the real deal I want to be able to get married and have a baby I was told right now in the conservatorship I'm not able to get married or have a baby I have she now certain years after the conservatorship started um, is in a situation where she says, and it's actually quite credible, uh, that she could cope handling that situation. She is, I think, running out of time now because uh, she is meeting um, the deadline that comes for, for, for women on a, on a natural basis. The, the, the clock is uh, ticking down um, and uh, she does not have much time left to make that dream come true, to, to care for children of her own. Um, and to have a normal family life to fulfill her, her, her womanhood, her motherhood dreams. And that in and of itself is actually a human right uh, violation. Uh, we are complaining quite rightly that the Communist Party in China is uh, conducting sterilizations among the Uyghurs. Um, and the same is of course also true if a woman here in the Western world is forced into sterilization and that uh, seems to be the case here. She was also put on different uh, medication, uh, lithium in this case, um, and uh, against her will. I was told by my at the time therapist, Dr. Benson, who died, that my manager called him in that moment and told him I wasn't cooperating or following the guidelines in rehearsals. And he also said I wasn't taking my medication, which is so dumb because I've had the same lady every morning for the past eight years give me my same medication and I'm nowhere near these stupid people. Three days later, after I said no to Vegas, my therapist sat me down in a room and said he had a million phone calls about how I was not cooperating in rehearsals and I haven't been taking my medication. All of this was a false. He, uh, he immediately the next day put me on lithium out of nowhere. He took me off my normal meds I'd been on for five years. And lithium is a very, very strong um, and completely different medication compared to what I was used to. You can go mentally impaired if you take too much, if you stay on it longer than five months. But he put me on that and I felt drunk. I really couldn't even take up for myself. That was um, because some co-workers, uh, some other people who have not seen her taking her ordinary medication claimed she was not taking her medication. Uh, there was uh, this claim that she did not do anything at all and uh, they put her on a stronger medication which is lithium against her will. Uh, the whole situation led to her believing that the uh, medical system does not serve her or that the th therapies do not work. I don't owe them to go see a man I don't know and share him my problems. I don't even believe in therapy. I always think you take it to God. She doesn't want to go to a shrink. She wants to go to church, so to say. And of course she's right. There's a lot of speculation involved in the arts of um, uh, psychiatry and psychology. Of course, um, it, it has evolved a great deal since the 19th century um, when uh, people were locked up for no good reason at all uh, and driven into insanity with electroshocks and stuff. Um, of course, it hasn't evolved, but it is not as uh, clear and uh, not as cleanly uh, investigated as other parts of medicine. Mm. And of, course she, and of course she's right because um, psychology and psychiatry are not as well tested as other forms of medicine. Um, there have been a, a review once a meta study uh, into the repetitiveness of uh, psychological studies and they found that a significant number of those uh, do not actually repeat well. 
So when a study claimed that, uh, I don't know, a, po a population would react in a certain way to a stimulus all the time, or in, I don't know, 60%, then the next study may come out under the very same uh, premises, uh, conducted in the very same way, that comes uh, up with a very different uh, percentage of, uh, uh, of people doing either this or that. So the, um, the um, consistency over the, over the studies uh, is quite limited in that particular field. And I think she is pointing to something that is quite dangerous, uh, what we see right now with also the climate hysteria and uh, other fields. Not all science is equally well settled. Um, there are more fundamental sciences like um, mathematics that basically that only really uh, works on the basis of um, of mental uh, objects like a circle, a point, and so on, and draws conclusions from from given axioms in a system. Um, those are, are well established. Uh, can you uh, rigorously uh, proven uh, to um, more advanced, more complex thoughts, uh, more complex uh, sorry, more complex sciences where you have to work more empirically, where things may uh, happen in one way in one situation and in a different way in a different situation. Uh, some of these systems are dynamic, like the, uh, the human mind, uh, the interaction with the world. Um, that is a very complex uh, topic and a belief, a blind belief in science uh, can be very dangerous if it if it is not in the concepts that make science, but if it is into uh, this institution uh, that is well-meaning, that has done uh, its uh, papers well, uh, it must always be right. It cannot always be right, it's, it's done by people. And uh, psychology is a field um, that uh, puts out a lot of uh, therapy approaches uh, still side by side, and there are no ultimate conclusions what therapy helps how well. Um, uh, that is still an open field and uh, one must be careful. Uh, she says in the very same speech that uh, she knows that she does need therapy and that there is a something that does work and she wants to, to carry on with that. Um, and I want to meet with a therapist once a week, not twice a week, and I want him to come to my home because I actually know I do need a little therapy. <laughs> Uh, she just she just does not believe that uh, these uh, three times four times a, a week sessions endless uh, talking talking to people she did not pick she does not like that this is conducive to her mental health at all it is actually quite well established in the uh, therapy community that uh, people need to be able to choose their therapists freely uh, it it makes uh, it, it makes a big difference whether there is trust between a client and his shrink, and therefore um, uh, she she does not she does not deny um, the concept as such, and she even wants to make use of it. She just says that she would rather go to church once in a while and be with normal people once in a while, and not sitting across all these experts all the time. And um, this brings me to the larger topic that. I think it's not just Britney Spears that a lot of us feel that a lot of aspects of our lives are taken over by people who claim to be experts on a variety of things, who claim to be authorities, um, are just um, um, power authorities or, um, you know, are coming in for maybe nefarious purposes or selfish purposes and uh, that they are not uh, uh, doing you any good, even if they are well intended, uh, which sense to be asked in many cases, but also um, um, that some of them are not actually well meaning. As it looks now, she has uh, gotten her substance abuse, uh, her alcoholism under control. She went to the anonymous alcoholics. I did AA for two years. I have like, you know, um, I did three meetings a week. Uh, so she is now teetotal clean um, and she doesn't look like the druggie uh, that uh, you would normally put on a, a conservatorship. Um, she also says in her testimony that, strange enough, she is paying all these people, all these uh, music industry people, who are very often uh, on very severe uh, substances, uh, who are very, um, very dependent on drugs, and yet uh, it, is, it is she and not them who, uh, who gets uh, totally controlled. What's also interesting is that she is in California. California is quite uh, infamous now uh, for having all these cities like LA 
uh, San Francisco, etc., where you, where you see tens of uh, uh, of uh, homeless people, um, people shooting up on the street, uh, people uh, pooing on the side uh, sidewalks, etc., uh, because they uh, they are not taken care of. Everybody says, well. Um, you know, also a mentally uh, ill person can do whatever they want. Um, it is it is strange how actually people who are dysfunctional are not uh, taken care of, uh, are not uh, told that they have to change certain things, that they have to get uh, on a normal uh, work schedule, etc., etc. And instead, we see a, a very conscientious, uh, very driven, very career-minded uh, woman being forced under under total custody of somebody else um that is a, a mismatch apparently and i think it is a societal one and i think it is one that is driving our society apart that we see a lot of hardworking people who feel they are uh, treated as if they are dumb as if they are crazy um, and they are constantly exploited uh, by the government uh, for example, um, they are milked uh, as taxpayers, but uh, they are not respected. Uh, they are Their lives are controlled uh, up to the point that uh, they cannot speak their minds anymore, while uh, obviously crazy people can do whatever they want. Um, and uh, this the double standard issue also drives Britney Spears uh, crazy. <laughs> Literally, um, she uh, she sees all these maids coming in with uh, new new um, nails uh, done every week, um, and she cannot go to any barber sh shop or anything. And uh, most of it was was um, justified with the Corona uh, uh, lockdown uh, thing. Uh, but okay, when she can't do it, why can't everybody else? My mom went to the spa twice in Louisiana during COVID. For a year, I didn't have my nails done, no hairstyling and no massages, no acupuncture, nothing for a year. I saw the maids in my home each week with their nails done different each time. And that is the same situation a lot of business owners had, uh, particularly in California over the past year, that um, Black Lives Matter can go uh, over the street and can, uh, you know, can mingle, can do whatever they want. Uh, but uh, the, the hardworking, conscientious, normal uh, person, they can't run about their own businesses and in a normal fashion. They are driven into bankruptcy. They are driven into insanity, sometimes into suicide, uh, while uh, others others who are actually mentally far more unstable, um, they can do whatever they want and nobody bothers them. So while I speak mostly about um, her being locked up and I also feel that a lot of us feel locked up uh, right now, um, being conscientious, responsible people, um, there are of course situations when you have to take care of others. So how can we decide, how can a state decide um, who has a mental disorder that disqualifies him from living an ordinary life. Um, and, and, and for how long does it uh, take uh, the, to fix that problem uh, individually, etc. And of course there is always this danger of, of power abuse. Conservatives are either stupid or scarily weird and therefore you don't have to deal with their ideas. Just set them aside. Um, this is a crazy person, it's a Nazi, a, someone who wants to um, engage in racism, sexism, homophobia. So don't listen to that person's ideas. A lot of us, um, we as more responsible people, we have self-awareness. We are soul-searching ourselves to death. Um, are we really crazy? Are we going stupid? And Albert Einstein once said famously, uh, a question that sometimes drives me hazy, am I or are the others crazy? And of course, it is impossible to tell in a, in a climate where everybody is constantly gaslighted, uh, where you are soul-searching yourself to the minutia, which, which uh, thought may be racist, which thought may be homophobic, uh, um, and so on and so on. And one way you can kind of solve that riddle is to look into the, the catalogs uh, that list the um, defined mental disorders that have been diagnosed so far. And I think it is now um, a very uh, comprehensive list, uh, or oh, there are two now. And there's, for example, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of uh, mental disorders of the American Psychiatric uh, Association 
And the second one is the International Classification of Diseases, which has a section for mental disorder. So if you want to find out if somebody has a disorder, you should not just listen to somebody else and rely on the expertism of other people. You should actually look into the exact diagnosis and then it is also important to make the judgment whether that diagnosis um, makes a person delusional. So for example, if you believe that somebody has um, anxiety, gender dysphoria, depression, etc. It does not mean that everything that person says is therefore uh, untrue. Um, uh, somebody with a depression can say he's, he has seen a red car driving down that street, then the car is still probably red uh, even though he had a depression. Um, it doesn't make the car blue or green or whatever. Uh, so you have to um, to run by the actual diagnosis and stick to it. Don't rely on experts blindly. Also don't think that only because you think that you have identified a disease that the person actually has a disease. But um, looking at the actual catalogs helps you to say whether somebody is actually impaired by his uh, 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 disorder in his judgment or if somebody remains reliable. And this is important also for your self-awareness. Um, if somebody calls you crazy, you uh, you know, um, you should ask, okay, uh, what craze do you believe I have? And could you specify it so maybe I can work that out? If you just try to say uh, I'm crazy in order to, uh, to tell people that they should not listen to me, uh, then uh, this is a no-go and you are def uh, defamatory and uh, this is uh, your attempt to control me uh, and it's not sincere. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please consider to send it around um, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.